Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning to those joining us from different parts of the world. My name is Gerald Joe C. Denaga, and I'm the current Associate Dean for Research for, for the College of Engineering, E.P. Diliman, and the Project Leader for the Engineering Research and Development for Technology for E.P. Diliman. The ERDP Consortium is a, is a program sponsored by the Department of Science and Technology to the Science and Education Institute. First of all, welcome to the ninth ERDP Congress. For this year, our theme is Engineering the Future Through Digital Transformation. Technology enables society to continue to operate despite limitations in physical inter interactions and restrictions in movement and travel. In the face of a global pandemic, we learned to rely more on emerging technologies and innovations to get the job done and keep the world running. A large scale technology driven transformation is inevitably the way of the future. Therefore, investing in the four domains of digital transformation is vital to keep up with the demands of our rapidly changing landscape. The ninth, the ninth year DT Congress shall provide an in-depth analysis on digital transformation and how engineering research and development will contribute to its full realization. For the past three days of the Congress, we have had experts share their views on the opportunities and challenges in digital transformation, including digital infrastructure, digital literacy and inclusivity, and data privacy. We have also had speakers talking about sectoral transformation in the government, business, and academe. Today, we will be discussing sectoral transformation in the production and manufacturing center. Now, manufacturing is well, defined as the process of turning raw materials or parts into finished goods through the use of tools, human labor, machinery, and chemical processing. So we have three things, process, machinery, and raw materials. Under, process, under materials, we have seen different ages throughout time defined by the materials prevalent or highlighted at that time. For example, we had the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age, which allowed us to use and make um, simple tools. However, uh, later on, we've had what we call the Steel Age, also actually characterized also with the Glass Age, which, which was what we call the Industrial Age, where it allowed us to build skyscrapers. A few decades later, we had what we call the Plastic Age, where, well, everybody's aware that we can have seen plastics used for the simplest packaging, but we have to admit that plastics have brought us all the way to well, allowing space flight. But today, uh, we will be talking about not just going beyond plastics, and it will be handled by Dr. Arnold Lubkuban, who will be talking about advancements in polymer technologies in the Philippines. Dr. Arnold Lubkuban currently holds an appointment as a professor and researcher at the Mindanao State University Iligan Institute of Technology in, uh, as part of the Department of Chemical Engineering and Technology. Prior to joining MSU IIT, Dr. Lubguban had a short-term Balik scientist stint with the Department of Science and Technology. He gave lectures and training on bio-based polymer processing to higher education institutes and local industry, which included ADMU, MSU IIT, Xavier University, and CAMRES Technologies. His research focuses on the use of low value agricultural and industrial waste byproducts, such as rice straw and crude glycerol, and converting them to value added industrial polymer products with commercial potential. He will be our third speaker. The next part of the presentation includes where we'll be discussing about machinery. Similar to the material ages, we have the different industrial ages associated with machines. For example, we started with the steam engine, where 
its advent allowed us to reduce human effort for production. And then later on, we've the advent of the conveyor belt, which allowed us to produce the production line and uh, the, the high production factories. Later on in the third age, we see what they call the advent of electronics, where it allowed us to do automated production. For our second speaker today, we will be having engineer Fred Lisa, who will be talking about technological readiness, business sophistication, and innovation on additive manufacturing, or what they call 3D printing. Engineer Fred Lisa is the project leader of the recently launched Advanced Manufacturing Center, or AMSEN, of the Department of Science and Technology. He is also the division chief of the Materials and Process Research Division of the Metals Industry Research and Development Center. Now the third component of what I said about manufacturing, after raw materials, machinery, and then we finally have process. We have heard of the term industrial revolution. And this reply, applies to what we call, what I've talked about process. When around seven, in the 1780s, we had steam power that allowed us to do mechanical production, which I said before does re replace human effort. But later on, about 100 years later, we had electricity, which enabled us to do mass production. And about another 100 years later, we had what we call the third industrial revolution where we had the digital revolution, where it brought us electronics and information technology, which brought about automated production. But today we're going to be talking about what we call the fourth industrial revolution, okay, where it is the advent of the cyber physical systems. We might have heard of the term industry 4.0, where it relies on the technologies and the infrastructure of the third industrial revolution, but it brings new ways in which technology becomes embedded within society. To talk more about that, we will have our first speaker today, engineer Leonidas Del Campo. He will be presenting about leveraging industrial IoT and advanced technologies for digital transformation in manufacturing. Mr. Del Campo is currently the Director of Engineering and Architecture of McKinsey and Company. Prior to joining that company, he worked as a principal architect at GE Digital and was the enterprise architect at Apple. He earned his bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of the Philippines, his master's in engineering from the Duke University, and his MBA from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. For this webinar, the program will be moderated by Dr. Virgilio Y. Adeliana, who is a faculty member of the Department of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering of the University of San Carlos. From 2011 to 2018, he served as Dean of the College of Engineering of the University of San Jose Recoletos. And he earned his business, his bachelor's in science degree in chemical engineering from the Cebu Institute of Technology, where he graduated magna cum laude. He got his master's in metallurgical engineering and his PhD in material science and engineering degrees from the University of the Philippines. Without further ado, I would like to turn over the floor to Dr. Abeliana and to the rest of the speakers. For all our viewers out there, have a good morning. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon to all the attendees, to our guest speakers. So we are here on the session of uh, production and manufacturing sector. So this is a very more, more interesting area of research because we are, uh, the academy is trying to link with the industries. Okay, so without Mark's further ado, as, as introduced already, we would like to give the floor to our first guest speaker, Mr. Lunedes de Ocampo. We will be talking about the leveraging industrial IoT and advanced technologies for digital transformation in manufacturing. Sir? So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for 
for having me here. I'm uh, honored to be uh, with the with the select uh, panelist, and uh, happy to share the floor with Happy again. Uh, so I'll uh, con I'll start by uh, we'll um, just want to make sure. Oh, okay. I'll be sharing the presentation from my end. Okay. So um, to begin with, um, I'm, I'm as I'm happy discussed. I'm uh, I'm going to discuss a topic that uh, that represents the digital age. And unfortunately, in the digital age, uh, we we need to be a little bit more precise about our our concepts. So um, I'll, I'll divide the section into uh, five parts. The first part is really uh, going into the topic statement and defining the, the concepts very precisely. Um, you know, the, the, the thing that I realized in the, the, the years that I've worked uh, in a consulting industry is that you're only as effective as how precise you are with a problem statement, so you cannot be as precise as the solution. So I think the topic statement is something that, uh, that uh, I, I'd want to um, uh, spend time uh, going through. Um, and then I'd want to go through the kind of the paradigm shift that's happening uh, that allows this 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 sort of productivity, and that is uh, is is the heart of this uh, the root for the transformation in 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 a lot of organizations, um, challenges and opportunity in this, this paradigm shift that's causing uh, the both actually the challenges and the opportunities uh, in 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 the manufacturing industry, and then the resulting uh, technology landscapes that this is occurs and how it impacts a lot of the organizations. Um, and then these are two parts. One is what we call the vertical integration. And then the second is what we call uh, horizontal integration. We'll go over that in, in the topics. And then the last is, uh, you know, the, 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 key, the key item that we're going to get out of, of, of this talk is kind of what is the foundation um, of, of the solution uh, for, for solving the, the opportunities uh, and the ability to create this vertical and horizontal integration as we've seen. Uh, and we, we define it through the foundation uh, technology stack. So this is uh, the, the technology stack that I'll be going through, you know, is something that uh, I first saw when I was with Apple. Um, I, it, it wasn't called Industry 4.0 at that time. It was just the need to connect all the information that we collected through the uh, equipment uh, that were generating um, tests and sensor data from the manufacturing floor, being able to collect it so that the uh, people within the company can run powerful analytics to analyze the data uh, so that we could uh, at that time, and, and at this and currently even used it to this day, uh, create efficiencies in the way products are manufactured and establish and keep the quality that we have at, uh, for, for, for the products that are generated. Okay, so uh, leveraging industrial IoT and advanced technologies for digital transformation and manufacturing. I think there are four key concepts here. First of all, industrial IoT. So IoT, um, it, well, industrial IoT comes from the concept of, of what industrial IoT. Uh, industrial IoT was more popular about, was popularized um, when mass sensors were available, connected to the internet and be able and, and the ability to collect the data through these mass sensors. Industrial IoT is a, it's, it's a different beast. Um, you know, it's the, the source of, of data uh, with industrial IoT are the control systems. I spent a few years at UP teaching control systems engineering and, uh, and the data from a temperature sensor uh, connected to the internet or, or a light sensor connected to the internet is very much different from the data that's collected across control systems that are connected to a few equipments uh, with control um, with feedback loops that need to calculate certain uh, uh, decisions in real time, and so the data flow is very different. So it, when we call, when you say industrial IoT. The problem statement becomes a little bit more difficult because you need more data and you need the systems to be a little bit more uh, 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 complicated. Um, advanced technologies, okay, so that's another very general topic um, as it's defined in, in Industry 4.0. 
uh, in this, this new transformation is a combination of uh, analytics. It, it, it's two worlds, the IT world and the OT world. The, in the IT world, it's more analytics and advanced computing, which includes cloud and, and uh, processing of uh, information. And then in the OT world, operational technology world, which is the plant, um, you have automation and robotics. And digital transformation, the fourth concept, is really, it's not so much minor changes in the processes. When you say transformation, it's really uh, a huge shift. And so that's what uh, digital transformation in this term, in the term that I'm going to be using, um, means. It's a, a, a huge shift in the way businesses are, are working, not just internally, but also externally, right? And not just uh, not just doing things uh, within their 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 own processes, but outside, and uh, but also doing activities out with external vendors, external parties, external partners. So digital transformation is that whole shift that even changes the business model. And then, of course, manufacturing. We all know, um, but in this term, manufacturing, as I've seen and I have guided a lot of clients. Uh, it, the, the impact of, of, of IO, industrial IoT and advanced technologies really also hit uh, not just the four walls of manufacturing, but also uh, the, in, the entire process of organization, uh, how it research, how it does research, how it does um, uh, human, human resources, the way it has to understand what capabilities need to be in place in a very, very dynamic manner, depending on what's happening in, in the plants. So I think so. So that's these are just the concepts I want to solidify so that uh, we, we could uh, have a very uh, better discussion. So the paradigm shift that's happening in in manufacturing um, and within industrial companies in general is the convergence of what I what they call IT and OT. So IT is a traditional world of information technology, uh, ERP, uh, enterprise resource planning systems, you know, uh, HR systems. Uh, and the traditional systems of, of, of what, co what corporate has fueled the in industrial revolution, right? Um, and then it, we have OT, and OT is the technology that you have at the plant, uh, the, the technologies that, uh, that, uh, that helped us produce uh, uh, what, what, what different products and, uh, in, and, and, and it helps us be more efficient at it. Uh, so traditionally, these worlds were very different. And these worlds are very separate. Um, in fact, one of the key uh, roadblocks that we see when helping industrial companies do this convergence is the walls that were performed uh, between these two layers. If, if you're familiar with the Purdue model uh, uh, security uh, 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 pattern uh, architecture, uh, they really separate everything layer one, layer two, layer three, and especially between layer three and layer four, which is at the, from the factory floor to the corporate systems uh, because of this, this divergence. Now, what's happening is that because there's this need for, um, for productivity at the plant level, at the OT level, the power of IT needs to come in. And therefore, uh, there's this in, in integration or, 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 or convergence of these two. And you know this 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 had the challenges that you provide, as I mentioned earlier, is to like cybersecurity. I just helped uh, a large corporate um, company in Europe um, with a cyber uh, with a cyber attack, a ransomware attack that just brought down both their all their IT and OT systems, um, and it, it it was introduced through the plants. Right. So this convergence is just very uh, tricky, both from the security aspect. Um, but it, it provides a lot of opportunities because now the, infer the use cases, meaning the value that we can get from the data from the plants is um, combined with, with, with the, the data that you have from corporate, uh, from corporate systems is, and the ability to use the data uh, uh, is, is much more efficient now with the power of compu uh, cloud computing and advanced uh, analytics, right? So there's this there's there was this challenge, but there are a lot of opportunities. Now, so what are the systems? What, what what's happening between these convergence? Between these convergence, uh, in this convergence, we we see two technology sh shifts. Right? There's the uh, there's what we call the horizontal integration uh, of 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 
organizational systems, meaning the data from the equipments uh, are integrated all the way up through the different systems that that uh, uh, that benefit the organization. So you go from the field, from the equipment level, from the sensors, uh, it goes up to the control systems, as we mentioned. There's nothing different to that that's always been, uh, that's been there for a while now, and because then that's the maturity of control systems engineering. And but but the, the, the trick now is that it goes up to the plant systems, um, and there are more mature plant system, but, at that, at, but still at this, it's still at that plant level. And then it moves up to the corporate system. So data flow goes up all the way up to corporate systems and even the cloud. And that's where all the, the benefits come. Advanced analytics, having two years and years of data about how a pump uh, performs. And based on that performance, understand uh, days and weeks in advance when a pump is going to fail and thus have someone come in uh, and maintain, uh, provide maintenance to the pump even before the, uh, the pump shows any signs of uh, physical signs of problems. Right? So that's that vertical integration that we, we, we talk about. And it deals with a lot of um, um, uh, linkages and you know, that those are the part, part challenges, but also the advantages. And then we, call, we go to the um, horizontal integration. Now, horizontal integration is where you then move from, from the data that you collected from the, from the sensors up to the corporate systems within what we call the four walls of the corporate environment or uh, organizational environment and link that into uh, data outside from vendors, right? from, 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 from organizations and for external entities that help you create your products. Right, so you, you integrate data from information about uh, a part, uh, information about scheduling of when a shipment is going to occur. You know, one of the powerful things that you, you can do. I mean, an example of what happened at Apple is, is when 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 you have quality data coming in and you understand the the sources of these different parts and understand the quality of how that product performed and you form a relation between how, which parts came from which vendor to understand with the, the certain level of qualities that, that each vendor intrinsically has and, and the, has in, within their products, there's a powerful relation across what you deliver to your products and uh, to your consumers and how that performs to the source of, uh, of raw, quote unquote, raw material from your vendors, right? Um, and then, so that's the, 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 the frontal part of, of manufacturing. And then of course, I just mentioned the, the, the end part where you also have data about your distribution, logistics, understanding with, in, in this global supply chain, right? That's very much key as we've seen in, with, with COVID, uh, right? It's going to be very important to understand um, how products are delivered, of course, how, how your raw materials can come, but how it's also delivered. So the effectivity of your just logistical systems is very important. And so this, this is what happens with the horizontal uh, integration, where you just, where you get, you enrich the data that you have within your four walls with data about your, 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 your so the source of, uh, of raw materials, to the way in which your products are delivered to to, you, to your consumers. Okay. And so what makes this for a vertical and horizontal integration um, possible? And um, how do we do, uh, what is the core? What is the foundation of this from, our, from experiences that, uh, uh, that I've seen in this So the, 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 and what's the kind of the key insight that, that, that's, that, uh, that we can use uh, when we look at different organizations to allow this to happen. This, the, the ability for, you to, for an organization to create the uh, vertical and horizontal integration is creating an environment that complements both the IT and the OT world, and of course unifies both of them. And we call this the uh, IT-OT or the IIoT technology stack. And um, this is a tiering of the, this is 
created through tiers of 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 architected through tiers of technical capabilities, which starts off with the the the, the setup of what we call a collection mechanism at the plant level. That's the first. The second um, aspect of the technology stack is the connectivity uh, between this the collection environment and an external central environment, which often is the cloud, uh, and links that to the three other components, which is the data component tier, the analytic tier, and the application tier. Um, and and so the, the, in, within these tiers, you have um, uh, different different uh, capabilities. The collection tier is the aggregation of data across all the control systems. The common and the connectivity tier um, is the ability for movement of this data from the plants into this common infrastructure, the data analytic infrastructure, analytic and application infrastructure. You have the data tier, which which is the ability to aggregate all the data across the different plants uh, and then the analytic tier to run data on top of the analytics on top of the data and the application tier to be able to create these transactions across your the, the insights that's generated uh, across uh, the data sets. I see the raising of the hands. Um, um, let me uh, continue and then let we can take and uh, and then so did this 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 uh, integration this vertical integration and horizontal integration happens when data is collected all the way from the, the the systems up and then the movement of the data across through the integration of different external systems and corporate systems so um so the value that this, this creates is the ability to run powerful analytics on top of your data sets and the ability to unify data across the different systems and then the different. Um, so um, so this is this is this is basically the the crust of the the this uh, this this foundation layer. The ability to collect data across all the control systems, across all the different sources, whether it be corporate systems. Uh, or external systems, integrate it in through a data layer, which is that data fabric that connects uh, the operational data with corporate data and external data, run, store it in the different form native uh, uh, storage mechanisms, uh, run analytics on top of it, machine learning algorithms to mine the data, and then an application here to create visibility. So, so in, in these five layers, um, it creates what we call a platform that allows organizations to, as I mentioned, create powerful analytics across the data that they have and to be able to create powerful applications. That applications meaning ability for uh, end users to be able to access the information and the insights readily. Uh, and, and, uh, and not only, uh, not only uh, you know, operators or people for corporate, but also data scientists to run powerful, um, to develop powerful models. So um, I can, I, I pause now. I know that we, we covered a lot of uh, topics and I'll, um, I'll leave the detailed discussions uh, later on um, with, with, the, with the different questions. Anything, um, um, I think, uh, I can shift over to the moderator or, or how, how are the questions uh, uh, coming? Yeah, I think the question and answer is the last part yes, of okay. the entire okay. program. So the two speakers are still to present. Yeah, and, thank you. yeah okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, for our next speaker, as already introduced by Dr. Danuga, then, uh, Uh, our next speaker would be discussing about the technological readiness, business sophistication, and innovation on the new term, additive manufacturing, or the 3D printing. So 
it would be uh, the, the presenter or the guest speaker is engineer Fred P. Lisa, the program leader, Advanced Manufacturing Center. Sir? Okay, good afternoon. Please uh, allow me to share my presentation. Would you now see my slides? Yes, sir. Okay, so good day to uh, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you to the PRDT organizers for inviting us to present in this conference. I am Fred Lisa, the Chief of the Materials and Process Research Division of the DOST MIRDC and the Program Leader of the Philippines Advanced Manufacturing Center. I will talk about te talk technological readiness, business sophistication, and innovation in additive manufacturing or AM, or better known as uh, 3D printing, uh, which is one of the disruptive uh, technologies that will help drive uh, digital transformation. Uh, this will be the outline of my presentation. I will begin with a short introduction about the Philippines ranking in the Global Competitiveness Index, as well as uh, how additive manufacturing adapts into the trend of a digital transformation. I will then present on how we can increase technological readiness through the AMSENS capabilities and initiatives, enhance business sophistication through a Philippine uh, uh, AM ecosystem, and boost innovation uh, through additive manufacturing R&D activities. Currently, the Philippines uh, is ranked uh, 64th in the Global Competitive Index out of 141 countries. The criteria includes technological readiness, business sophistication, and uh, innovation capability of the Philippines. In 2013, McKinsey Global Institute named additive manufacturing or 3D printing as one of the 12 disruptive technologies that will transform the business and the global economy, which will improve the Global Competitive Index by 2025. Originally, additive manufacturing was mainly used for rapid prototyping, but the recent advances in technology suggests that it has the potential to rev revolutionize the manufacturing process in enhancing the supply chain capabilities. The main advantage of additive, additive manufacturing is in the speed with which manufacturing is done, as it reduces lead time from product design to release and allows for better customization and cost-effective small batch production. Digital transformation is about adopting disruptive technologies to increase productivity and value, chain crea uh, value creation resulting in enhanced products, improve uh, organizational structures, or the automation of processes. Digital transformation has three main areas, customer experience, operational processes, and business models. Customer experience where a successful digitalization improves on how the company collects, understands, utilizes, and responds to customer data, thereby improving services and overall speed factor. Operational processes where digital transformation gives man managers the tools I think we we lost the signal of engineer Lisa.
Secretariat, shall we wait for him or? Ah, okay, I think engineer Lisa is, hello sir, can you hear us? Huh? Kindly connect back, share your screen. Uh, your audio is not also, cannot be heard here. Okay, can you hear okay. me now? Yeah. It's... Okay, thank you. So where did you realize that uh, I don't have the audio? In what slide? So maybe you could go back a little. Yeah, you, you can go back. Uh, okay. Yeah, go back a little bit. Okay. So let me start from here. So let's talk about uh, technological uh, readiness. So, sir, your, your slide is not shared yet. Okay. Yeah, we, we can see you, but the the slides cannot be seen here. I'm, I'm sorry for that uh, technical difficulty. So let me share again the, file, the slides. Okay. okay. Can you see it now? Yeah, we, we can see the slide now. Okay, let me go back to the previous slide, please. Okay, so maybe uh, uh, let me start from this. Okay, so let's talk about uh, technological uh, readiness. Excuse me. Okay. Technological readiness is composed of uh, seven indicators, uh, three of which are opinions or questions on uh, availability of latest technologies, uh, firm level technology uh, absorption, and uh, FDI and uh, technology transfer. The OST uh, recognizing the role of additive manufacturing or AEM in realizing the vision of uh, increasing the country's global competitiveness through te technological readiness and innovation has funded half a billion pesos to establish AMSEN or the Advanced Manufacturing Center as the Philippines National Hub for Additive Manufacturing. The AMSEN program has two uh, project components and let me discuss quickly MATDEV and Rapid Advanced. The first component is the development of materials for AM being performed in the MATDEV laboratory uh, located at the DOST ITDI with uh, its uh, MATIB lab launched in December 2020. In the second component project, the Rapid Admatech, advanced 3D printing technologies were acquired to speed up product development uh, via rapid prototyping, hence accelerating innovation. The facility was launched recently, last June 2021. AMSEN has seven components or services focusing on R&D training and policy standard development. AMSEN is equipped with some of the latest additive manufacturing technologies, such as material extrusion, which are able to print high performance plastics and composites, powder bed fusion that can print functional metal parts like uh, titanium, aluminum, stainless steel, etc., and VAT photopolymerization that is able to print technical ceramics. We also have 3D scanning technology as well as material preparation and processing equipment such as a filament, uh, filament makers, powder uh, preparation and uh, material testing instruments, as well as software solutions to ensure optimal uh, product properties uh, prior to manufacture. Aside from uh, the DOIST acquired equipment, we have technology partners that located their latest 3D printing solutions at AMSEN, which we can use for R&D, training, and services. We have some technologies from, uh, as shown on your screen, from Puzzle Box, from Omnifab, from Nord International, from Atarashi International, from Carl Zeiss, from uh, Hexagon, uh, MSA software, and uh, materialized for additional software for optimizing parts. Uh, with all this, we are, are keeping Amazon abreast with the latest technologies, thereby improving uh, technological readiness. 
Bringing together all of these technologies will lead to a process workflow that can be done in a digital environment where designs and subsequent uh, design iterations can be made without the limits and burdens of fabricating the actual parts until the desired properties of the final product are optimized and validated using uh, various simulation softwares. With the state-of-the-art technology uh, available at AMSEN, it is also important to enhance business sophistication by ensuring these technologies are accessible to AM practitioners in the academic, industry, and government sectors. Uh, business sophistication concerns two elements that are intricately linked. The quality of a country's overall business networks and the quality of individual firms' operations and strategies. Amsen created the Connect 3D Minds or Connected Minds ecosystem to build a community of professionals, practitioners, and innovation centers to enable the thriving of research and development and induce the adoption of additive manufacturing for advanced prototyping, product innovation, and development. Through this scheme, different clusters were formed and given access to Amsen facilities, training programs, technical services, or anti collaborations, and a lot more. Here, members of the ecosystem, such as students and researchers from the academy, are given opportunities to conduct their thesis research, identify thesis topics pertaining to AM, avail additional research grants, and even explore career opportunities by being acquainted with other ecosystem members, such as industries and government. This uh, five clusters are being linked together through the following means. The AMSEN Create Ready Minds Academy or Created Minds Academy shall implement training programs to establish an expert school in additive manufacturing. Under this scheme, the members of the uh, ecosystem undergo competency development, certification, and training from international universities and technology providers. We also have AMSEN Integrated Online System or IOS, a digital platform that improves ease of doing business and make our services accessible anywhere in the country where you can just upload your design, pay in person or online, and choose between pick up or having it delivered at your convenience. These schemes directly address the critical elements of a nation's business sophistication. Now that we have the latest technologies and networks of very capable personnel, we can now bring them together to boost innovations through R&D activities that address the various needs of the country. Innovation is particularly important for economists as they approach the frontiers of knowledge and the possibility of generating more value by merely integrating and adapting both exogenous and endogenous technologies. In particular, it means sufficient investment in R&D, the presence of high quality scientific research that can generate basic knowledge needed to build the new technologies. In this area, AMSEN is boasting the innovation capability through R&D activities. Such as uh, this example with the Philippine Army, AMSEN collaborated on a research project to design an IED, an IED disruptor. With the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute, we developed a filter column for wastewater, selectively collecting cr uh, chromium ions from wastewater. From, the, from a startup company, Fame Inc., we collaborated to develop a, a waterproof and robust transponder plastic enclosure which will be installed in small-scale small uh, vessels. We are also working on various projects that showcase our competence in advanced manufacturing, at the same time making a strong impact to our society. And uh, here are some of, some of them uh, shown on your screen, and we have more of that still uh, on the way. So how is AMSEN planning to move forward in improving the country's global competitiveness? AMSEN intends to acquire additional technologies to further increase technological readiness. For phase two, we are working on more than half a billion of uh, additional technologies to be put in place in AMSEN. To further enhance our business sophistication, AMSEN will develop the AMSEN ARMS or the Advanced Remote Manufacturing Service, which is a database of specialization per region so we can expedite additive manufacturing jobs and share resources in a more efficient manner that is being facilitate, facilitated through the 
IOS digital platform. Lastly, as part of the Philippine AM roadmap, these 40 areas will be the focus in terms of R&D, which intends to boost the innovation capability. Uh, these key areas are composed of uh, manufacturing, uh, which focuses on uh, support to the self-reliance defense, defense posture program, support for the Philippine space programs, low to me, uh, medium volume production, and uh, simulation and verification of 3D printed parts and components. For the medical, we, we will focus on the development of patient-specific implants, development of minimally invasive surgical instruments, and development of anatomical models for pre-surgery planning and uh, surgical training. For construction, we will be developing our own local 3D concrete printer. And for consumer goods, in which a variety of membranes will be developed uh, for uh, various applications. To sum it, it up, to further increase the technological readiness of the country, AMSEN has acquired and will continue to acquire the best available technologies in additive manufacturing. To enhance business sophistication and collaboration, AMSEN will be leveraging the connected minds or connected minds the ecosystem, the Creative Minds Academy, the, Adva the AMSEN Integrated Online Service, and the AMSEN Arms. To boost the innovation capability, AMSEN is pursuing more R&D projects focusing on the 40 areas, namely manufacturing, medical, construction, and consumer goods. AMSEN uh, will continue to grow, and as we continue to grow, we invite friends and colleagues to connect and uh, collaborate with us in embracing digital transformation and uh, advancing the Philippines towards uh, industry 4.0. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Engineer Lisa. No? Very nice presentation. No? Personally, I, I find it a big leap towards uh, advanced manufacturing already. So anyway, we can discuss more of those during the Q&A. So uh, let's move to our, uh, the last but not the least speaker. He would be talking to us or be discussing to us a while. Uh, advancement in polymer, polymer technologies in the Philippines. So we have already one center. So anyway, not to prevent the discussion, let me, I'll give you the floor. I give the floor to Dr. Arnold Lububan, sir. Uh, all questions should be entertained after the last speaker. Okay, so please bear with us. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, uh, I would like to thank ERDT for this opportunity to showcase our research initiatives on developing new technologies in the field of sustainable polymers in the Philippines. So the NICER Center for Sustainable Polymers located at MSUIIT has now grown in capacity and capability in search of alternatives to existing polymer-based products in the market. So I would also like to thank the US's Science for Change and NICER programs, which made this center possible. And our earlier collaboration with USAID Stride, which initiated the research on the conversion of rice straw into functional polyols and polyurethanes. So presently, uh, with the generous funds provided by these agencies, we are confident that the center will become effective vehicle for change and advancements in polymer-based industries in the Philippines. So why sustainable polymers? Presently, the global manufacturing industries are heavily dependent on petroleum for their energy and raw material needs. So burn, burning or processing oil exacerbates global warming and poses serious threats to our national security. So for these reasons, we need to kick uh, oil addiction by investing in sustainable reform to reduce oil demand while uh, taking steps to curb a global, global warming. So the aim of uh, sustainable polymers R&D is to focus on to research efforts to generate or produce renewable and ultimately uh, sustainable polymers. So there should also be a balance between low cost production or process or product performance comparable to or better than the existing petroleum based counterpart. 
So for example, it may be seen as a cycle of polymerization or depolymerization to re reutilize and use polymers. Another example to your right is an example uh, is, the, is the use of bio-based raw materials to synthesize polymer products. So as a result of these uh, initiatives, we hope to develop and strengthen our country's green economy, which by uh, definition is to improve human well-being and social equity while uh, significantly reducing environmental risks and ecological scarcities. So green economy is uh, a collective result of these three components shown. Uh, low and zero carbon technology is the term given to technologies that emit low levels of CO2 emissions or no net uh, carbon dioxide emissions at all. So while resource efficiency means using limited resources in a suitable manner, sustainable manner while min minimizing impacts of the environment. And lastly, your social inclusivity there is uh, also considers improving the terms on which individuals and groups take part in a society. So this is the map of uh, Northern Mindanao. And according to Dr. Alamban, uh, regional director of DOSD-10, uh, Northern Mindanao is being developed to become the breeding ground for technological and entrepreneurial advancement given the atmosphere of innovation cultivated by local, lo local uh, academic institutions. So in Iligan City shown there, uh, MSU IIT will play an important role in spearheading the utilization and conversion of local sustainable pol uh, polymer material sources into value added and industrially important polymer products. So uh, this center will serve the academe, related industries and the communities of region 10 and neighboring places. So the Center for Sustainable Polymers is, is the first in Region 10 and the country that will have the main R&D capacity and expertise to address the pressing concern of the manufacturing industry's heavy dependence on petroleum. So also the growing demand of sustainable polymers in the global market and processing of the abundant uh, sustainable raw material sources in the region. So examples of those are coconut uh, byproducts or derivatives and fish processing waste. So region 10 is one of the biggest biodiesel product in the country with over 25% in production capacity. So with that, uh, the center collaborates with neighboring HEIs with the aim of capacity building in terms of R&D facilities and training of experts in the field. So we also partner with um, Filipino owned industries who commit to support the research product outputs with potential commercial value. So also this center, which will be uh, established in MSU IIT, will create a, an environment which is symbiotic for research development and commercialization. So uh, this, shows, this slide shows the progress of uh, polymer research in the region then, so it started out as uh, through the General Balik Scientist Program of the DOST in, twin, uh, in 2014 uh, to 2016. So presently, an advanced polymer facility at MSU IIT was uh, established through a research grant given in 2017, which, was, uh, which has produced different uh, patentable uh, technologies, papers published, industry partnerships, and commercialization initiatives. It has also graduated uh, uh, a number of uh, students and became a service facility for researcher, uh, researchers in the region and neighboring areas. So this center also will uh, continue to reach out to more industries through development of new industry, industry competitive products. So uh, this slide uh, describes the functional role of the, uh, the center of sustainable polymers. So the focus will be on the industrial and biomedical materials research and development for future commercialization. So this can be made possible through proper IP management and productive industry partnerships. So in a nutshell, um, the general objective of the, pro of the program is to establish a collaborative research and innovation center for sustainable polymers that, is, that, that, that are endemic in the area. So not only in region 10, but the Philippines as a whole, uh, it, uh, as a result of these uh, uh, initiatives. So 
the current facility of the CSP include the materials characterization, chemical processing, with chemical analysis laboratories. It is also a service uh, facility that accepts analysis on polymer rheology, uh, materials composition, determination, thermal conductivity, thermal properties, among others. So we will be adding more uh, equipment to the center this year to accommodate your process and testing needs. So at present, uh, the center consists of three projects, uh, is working on uh, these research projects, uh, specifically focused on coconut uh, monoglycerides into value added polyols and polyurethane foam products of commercial importance. So another project is focused on the development of fish processing wastes into usable biomedical and wound patch and nutraceuticals. So lastly, uh, an innovative approach of using crude glycerol from biodiesel plants and processing it to convert to a high value polyurethane modified concrete for industrial uh, flooring system. So these uh, three projects stem from the need to use locally produced raw materials uh, from industrial processes, which are disposed in high amounts, but with very low economic value. So these, uh, uh, these projects will increase productivities for coconut and fish processing uh, uh, farmers or workers in the region. So with the growing facility consisting of multiple laboratories, there is a need to adapt to a digitized lab management system. This is very highly important. So the CSP is uh, slowly transitioning into electronic-based research data management to live up to the presence vastly connected and um, uh, collaborative research environment. So some of the advantages of this digital transformation include more efficient data management, consistent adherence to standards and research compliance, high security IP compliance, and added functionality such as workflow solutions for our research activities. So we plan to implement the use of ELN or electronic lab notebook at the center. It is a software for data recording uh, facilitates team collaboration and a useful tool for IP protection, uh, requirements and compliance and uh, lab workflows. So examples of ELN uh, platforms uh, is indicated. So we have this uh, lab archives, which is cloud-based, Cymex notebook, ECAT, lab manager, and eLab journal, uh, etc. So integrating a software application may be daunting and challenging, but uh, we look forward to a more productive research operation with this uh, integration. So here are our current HEIs and industry partners. We have Ateneo de Davao, uh, Caraga State, Emission Awan and Marawi, and industries include the uh, Chemres Technologies, Nuevo Chemist Specialties, and uh, Euratex Homes, or the RNC Philippines. So we hope to become a national center with vision and mission of providing innovative solutions to business critical material challenges and accelerate product development from lab to marketplace. We also intend to strengthen economic, uh, international uh, collaborations. So the overarching uh, goal of the center is to, contrib to contribute to the socioeconomic status and inclusive economic development uh, in the Philippines. So for more information about the center, you may contact us through the below uh, detail, uh, details. Uh, our industry coordinator is Dr. Malaluan, and I'm the program leader of uh, the CSP. So with that, thank you for listening. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Lugoban. So regards to the COVID. Actually, I work in IIT from 1982 to 2006. No? So uh, I worked with the metallurgical, ceramics, and chemical engineering department. Heard about you then uh, because of the need, the family to move here in Cebu. So that's why I am now working here with the University of San Carlos. So anyway, uh, that's a very nice presentation no? and very what. Uh, I, I feel happy because I, I'm really an Iligano and still, no? I have my house and lot there. So <laughs> I'm happy that Iligan would become another center for that matter. Okay, so uh, thank you for all the presenter. Now we are on the Q&A portion now, no? So 
uh, you can post your question. You have an icon in the in the bottom, no? side by side with raise your hand. You can write your question. No? Uh, so far in my when I open it, no one is asking question. So we we are a participants of 223 people, but no one is asking question. <laughs> I do not know. No. So anyway, maybe I'll be asking the first question. I would like to ask uh, Engineer Ocampo, because he was talking about the vertical integration, horizontal integration. He was also talking about the the speak uh, the IoT, and I think the IIoT and all those terms. Now I can recall uh, I talked to one uh, Japanese consultant, government consultant, and he was saying me that uh, in 2018, when there was, because in Japan, there's always that big national conference for all industries. Now when Toyota was presenting that they are now in the AI, so meaning to say they're moving up in their production towards AI. Now all of the other thousands, no? Uh, other CEOs were asking immediately their staff, do we have that course EI here in Japan? So I think, of course, there was not, no? So it is related to your discussions. Then eventually that guy that I've talked to got an idea that why not we go to the Philippines and train our, our their engineers to become EI engineers. So I launched a project from 19, 2018 until the pandemic, it was shut down. So we were trying to train uh, engineering, almost graduating students, no, fifth year in the different universities here in Cebu, just for that, no. And eventually, they would be hired by the different companies, and they would be trained further for about artificial intelligence. So maybe, uh, Dr. Ocampo, can you expound further on that? Uh, because uh, data is data, no, uh, without. Uh, but I think there's a need for automation and how to make use of those data. Sir, can you explain further on that? Sure, yeah. I mean, AI is one of the more powerful tools that are delivered by the vertical and horizontal integration. So vertical and horizontal integration, right, and industrial IoT is all about collecting data across various sources, data uh, that were not available before, it, uh, data across the operations from the sensors because typical IT systems were only data from, from, from technologies, from systems, right? Now it's data from physical equipments. And artificial intelligence provides us the ability to create relations where we couldn't see um, before across all these data sets. So AI is, uh, analytics is one of the more powerful digital assets that are being uh, generated or that, that are, are using this data. Um, and that's 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 one of the ways of extracting the value, um, and and therefore it's good to see that uh, you and 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 our local community local institutions are fostering AI, because in this new digital world, um, gone are the times where uh, the value is only applications, meaning the transactional applications that you and I experience over the internet, over you know our PCs. Now digital assets are more and more the, the models that we, we can create and we can deliver through the access of all the data sets that are available. Not just access to the various data sets, but historical data sets, years and years of data that only artificial intelligence can extract patterns and insights from. Thank you, sir. So my, I have a follow-up question because you talk about horizontal integration in which you were also telling us that the, the supply chain during that, design, that time would be all across industries, meaning to say uh, each of the industry may, may, have, may have the same common supplier like that. No? So actually I'm a member also when I was still the dean of the uh, semiconductors, electronics and industries of the Philippine safety. And they're trying to, to talk to its member that, come on, uh, in order to cut price of our raw materials and equipments and supplies, we have to, we have to be open you know, how much volume that we can, we're getting 
from our suppliers. Eventually, we want to unify, no? One supplier, maybe. So I, I was wondering if that is possible, uh, Philippine scenario, because it may lead to some bad business effect because opening all the information from, from one industry to the other competitor through the supply chain like that. So can you please expound on that, your horizontal uh, integration, please? Yeah, the horizontal integration, yeah. So um, I'm serving a client right now, uh, one of the largest uh, bottler companies. And basically what they're trying to do is create a platform to unify um, their distributors. And, and these are already mature companies and, uh, and they see the value in being able to link the information across these uh, distributors uh, to, uh, to improve their, uh, their operations. And so one of the, th this is a very uh, powerful um, uh, evolution or powerful um, development uh, because it then allows uh, all parties to be more efficient, not just the, uh, the companies that produce your, your products, but also uh, how it gets to consumers. So the supply, so my um, digital, dig, this digital industry 4.0 started with the manufacturing plants and started in the four walls because that was the most obvious uh, benefit of, of linking sensor data up to corporate systems. And, and creating inside out of it. Now people are seeing that once you've connect, once you've created that vertical integration, and if you have a strong core of data um, generated within the corporate, the next, the next phase is to look outside and to link it. And this creates, uh, once a company goes out of their four walls and unifies both the producers and the consumers and allows them to participate in their in 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 the improvement of their ecosystem in their operations it increases a lot of uh, it it allows potential uh for productivity and for value for the company itself right so i think this is the next step so af after the four walls it's exposing it outside to to the different uh, participants um, in the value chain, and um, and and a much more value can be generated by uh, organizations. So that this 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 shifts from the supply side uh, value, where people are just trying to cut cost per product, to a demand side uh, value generation where you bring in uh, the consumers uh, and partners into your ecosystem and, and makes your product much more valuable. So that's kind of the next step. And, and that's where a lot of the digital, the, the companies, the, a lot of the other more mature technology companies are, are heading. Yeah. Okay. Very insightful so, questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that uh, explanation. Now, let me go to engineer Lisa. No? So the way I understand it, you're with MARDC. So the, this AMSEN is really with, it's a government funded project, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Or yeah. the Advanced Manufacturing Center of the OST. Okay. Uh, the, the, I think uh, one of the government led centers, no? Mm -hmm. uh, so which means that uh, it is fully funded. Okay. But, uh, I think uh, one third of the solutions no, or the technologies that we have here right now are located for free, as I presented earlier, by our technology partners. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So actually, sir, in just a, a brief background, I am an old engineer already. I started working way back in the 1980s. Yeah, MRDC is one of our good partner no i was working with national steel corporation be before of course we have to go to the other, other side of the compound now with you presented this one i really found out that wow it's a big leap already for the capability of mardc no so my question now sir is that uh, advanced prototyping is very important of course no in the design in any companies now uh, although you have mentioned that you have already some effort to make that the provincial uh, industries companies can link you also, so is, how how is it done, sir? For example, here in Cebu, uh, of course you mentioned also universities can link with you. How how can we do it? Is it virtual or do we need to go there 
face to face with you and discuss that whatever prototyping like that yes uh, there are various ways wherein uh, you could connect with Amsen. Uh, currently uh, we don't have yet the satellite, regional satellite centers but in the probably next year in the phase two of Amsen for another three years uh, we have a, a plan to uh, have a regional satellite centers that's oh. why so in fact uh, some of the DOIST regional personnel right now uh, have undergone training through the AESTM International mm -hmm. uh, in preparation for that plan. But for the meantime, uh, as I presented earlier, we have, we have what we call the AMS in ARMS or the Advanced Remote Manufacturing Service to okay. be supported by the AMSEN Integrated Online System. So all the clusters or uh, stakeholders, no? uh, inno uh, researchers, innovators in the region can have access to AMSEN services. Mm -hmm. So using the uh, AMSEN uh, integrated online system, you could just upload your design. I think that is the beauty of additive manufacturing. Remotely, we can manufacture uh, your requirement. May it be a concept, a prototype, or a, a commercial model. So you just upload your design in our portal, in the IUS portal, and then uh, we have to uh, just uh, validate it if you have the completed, uh, if you have the complete information or specifications in it. And then after that, uh, we'll just provide you the code. And uh, we, uh, once you confirm that uh, order, we will just print it. And you have the option, we have the option to pay online, a payment system. And then, of course, right now, uh, we could send it to you through your service, like if you are in Cebu. So oh. that is the beauty of the advanced rem uh, remote manufacturing service. Uh, even if you are in a MSU IIT, you can send the file, pay online, and then we send it, the printed part uh, to MSU IIT, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, another okay. question that is, are you capable of, because uh, we have uh, ISO ceramics, is it also 3D printing for ceramics? Can you do it also? Metals like that? Yes. Uh, uh, for now, uh, uh, we have two uh, technologies, but I think uh, it depends on the type of material. So, for example, we have the uh, uh, AOS M290, wherein we could print uh, titanium, aluminum, stainless steel, etc. Mm -hmm. We also have the ceramic maker that we could uh, print uh, ceramic, uh, ceramic parts. Yes. Yeah. Can you do it also, sir, layer by layer? For example, I have my first layer is copper, my next layer is zinc, like that. Is, is it possible? Uh, yeah, for now, for metals, uh, we don't have yet that option. Okay. Although uh, in additive manufacturing, we, we have this uh, term called hybrid. So if mm. you have a machine like you do uh, uh, from a base material like uh, uh, 4140 or, or steel, yeah. Uh, in certain aspects of that shafting, for example, uh, you could do additive manufacturing, localized uh, uh, additive manufacturing, and then you do subtractive, subtractive manufacturing again to, to put it into a desired uh, tolerance. Or tolerance. So uh, actually, I'm asking for that sir, because I'm the, the thesis and the research coordinator of our department, mechanical and manufacturing department of University of San Carlos. Mm -hmm. And... Of course, I have to advise students also on some topics. No? So that's why I'm happy that I'm being put up here by ERDP to be your moderator because I learned so much also. No? Now I know where to link later on with the polymer also. And of course, with that uh, AI, because there are students who are asking that, but unfortunately, I cannot guide them uh, directly no? to, to where to connect. So thank you for that information, sir. No? So I thank think you. yeah, we have, we have gone a long, long way with this. No? In research, no? Uh, sure. I'd yeah, like, yeah uh, for the ARDT uh, participants, yep. AMSEN could really be of value to you, especially for your uh, thesis and research uh, projects. Uh, I have been the division chief of the prototyping division before, and uh, without the benefit of uh, additive manufacturing, it's very, very hard to come up with a concept or a prototype. It's very hard. Uh, it, would, it would undergo several... Uh, uh, conventional manufacturing process. But with additive manufacturing, from your digital, digital model, you, you could just print it. And at any time, anytime you could just re it, uh, iterate your designs uh, to come up with your final design. So 
we encourage our uh, ERDT uh, participants, no, uh, students to to connect with AMSEN. If you have research projects that requires uh, a, a concrete output, a, a prototype, for example, to expedite to fast track your research activities. Anywhere yeah. in the country, yeah, uh, you just have to access us through our uh, portal, AMSEN yeah. portal. I, and actually, I I screenshot also the last part of your discussion for the link for the for, uh, for the emails no okay so thank you very much sir then uh, i have to complete no in pay, to be fair to all the presenter i have also to shoot two more questions for dr lobdoban for his uh, polymer uh, national center for sustainable polymer no actually uh, sir arnold no i i was really happy that to, to hear this one because after all uh, Historically, Iligan was also called as the industrial city of the South no, during the Marcos regime. They were envisioning to put as many industries in Iligan City. That's why we have so many industries until now. Name it the basic raw material, steel, flour, oil, uh, what, uh, cement, and so on. So now uh, you, you are moving it to a higher level as a center now. No? Uh, this is more of this polymer, sustainable polymer research. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm also interested with the academic side because actually so many of my students are asking if they could do some diesel conversion like that. No, but in your case, you are trying to produce uh, from biodiesel, then convert it into polyurethane, then the fish mm -hmm. processes and the coconut oil. No, So uh, are these projects sir, still active? Meaning I, I, can I link my students to this? Sure, sir. So, yes, sir. So the, the idea of NICER, uh, we just uh, got approved of our NICER project, but beforehand, uh, we got this uh, GIA from uh, uh, Ishirt, uh, the USD. Uh, that's a, a generous sum to uh, capacity for capacity building. So we purchased uh, equipment for polymer characterization. And then we had uh, three projects then uh, with that, uh, we started this, uh, uh, jump started this uh, facility on uh, sustainable polymers. So uh, this is still ongoing. Uh, a new project, uh, the NICER Center for Sustainable Polymers, will uh, officially start in, uh, in a month. So that will be in October. And that uh, uh, there are three component projects, and we can add more projects to that. So uh, one of those uh, projects are... Uh, the conversion of uh, uh, biodiesel or, or no, no, a crude glycerol, which is a derivative of coconut oil processing to uh, materials like polyol and polyurethanes. Okay. So by all means, sir, uh, the, the lab is open to do, you know, consultation uh, on your chemical processes as, uh, you know, a focus on sustainable polymers. Uh, this, this processing, sir, is what, what's, can you explain it further? Uh, what, what would be the output? What would be the raw okay. materials needed? Okay. It's processing. All right. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll give an example. So uh, we started uh, out with um, this crude glycerol. So this is uh, um, one of the byproducts of uh, biodiesel or any coconut uh, oil processing. And this is uh, actually disposed in very large amounts. So um, because of, uh, it is in crude form, so this is uh, sold in very, very uh, uh, low, uh, uh, low cost. So uh, what happened is that we add value to this, uh, for example, this crude glycerol, and then um, convert it to a high value uh, chemical product, uh, such as polyol. So this crude glycerol has enough uh, functionality or, uh, that uh, by chemical conversion, we can actually elevate the value of this uh, uh, low value, uh, crude glycerol. So from crude glycerol, we will uh, convert it into polyol, and then from polyol, we convert it into different uh, polymer, uh, polyurethane products. So those polyurethane products include uh, your roof insulation, um, uh, uh, flooring systems. Uh, is, um, we have a wall panel insulation. We have flexible foams, and among others, many others. Okay. Actually, I'm asking for that because I have one team of students doing the thesis. We wanted to study about the how to utilize the waste 
fish material so because uh, big big fish market here in Cebu and so much ways that we wanted to convert it into some sort of food. Anyway, sir, I would just like to link with you okay, and email MC to talk to yes, the sir, sir. 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 So they were delayed now for a year yes. in their presentation. So uh, I really need to have that one. So thank you very much. Sir, sir, sir. Yeah, okay. thank you, Dr. Lukuba. Now, uh, let me ask the students now, no? can you can you ask your questions also? Uh, we have heard two questions. Uh, to speaker number three, I think this is Dr. Lobgoban, what partnerships are needed to foster an environment culture to realize more sustainable polymer solutions in the future? This is from Jason Bijik. What, uh, come again. Uh, uh, what uh, partnerships needed to foster an environment slash culture to realize more sustainable polymer solutions in the future? Okay, so uh, yeah, that, that's a very good question, uh, very general, but uh, let me uh, maybe cite an example. Uh, one of the partnerships that we really treasure the most is a partnership with uh, industries. So uh, at, uh, at, the, at present, uh, we have these partnerships with uh, uh, Chemres Technologies and Wevochem, and then soon to be partner uh, is uh, Euratex Homes. So uh, as an example, we, with um, Nuevo Chem uh, specialties, uh, they are located in the zone and they're making actually they're starting to do or produce uh, insulation uh, roofing system mm. so uh, at the side of the academy we do not know you know we do not know the requirements the industry requirements uh, of this uh, particular insulation foam so we rely upon them this partnership or collaboration to really get the inside uh, information uh, about these uh, uh, properties of the insulation that is really needed in the, in, the, in the commercial setting. So it's kind of like a, um, um, uh, like a feedback mechanism. So we, we have the product, we send it to them, the properties and all of those uh, um, uh, qualities of this uh, insulation foam. And they get back to us with uh, uh, maybe some uh, comments on uh, these properties. So we work, on the, uh, we work on these properties again until we perfect it. So uh, fortunately, now, uh, at this stage of this partnership, we are already uh, going to uh, do, uh, we, are, we are now doing pre-commercialization of this insulation. So we're very happy to, 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 to see that uh, uh, as a result of this partnership. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Jason, I hope you got the answer. Yes. No? Uh, another question is from Rob Azil Barredo. Good afternoon. I would like to ask a question about AMSEN. Do you have a facility now in Visayas region, specifically Cebu? And do you allow students to do research in your facility or allow them to use some of your equipments? Okay. Uh, we don't have yet the facility, uh, but uh, for the phase two starting next year, to set up satellite centers in all regions. But I'd like to mention that right now we have around 32 fab labs or of all over the country. And we have in Region 7, I think, seven uh, fab labs that uh, you can connect with if you have some 3D printing requirements. Uh, but uh, if there are limitations, and if it is beyond their capability, uh, you can go directly to AMSEN through our AMSEN portal. As I mentioned earlier, we have the Advanced Remote Manufacturing Service and the AMSEN Integrated Online Service uh, System portal. So... Uh, that's how right now we are creating that ecosystem together with the fab lab. So meantime, uh, you could connect directly with the fab labs. And if it is beyond their capability, your requirements is beyond their capability, you can connect directly with them anywhere in the country. Uh, this is my question. It's not from the student, but uh, do you have also some means of marketing your capability, sir? Aside from uh, attending this forum like this, among the scholars, because uh, I really find it, you no, know, may, maybe many companies are interested in that, but we do not know yet, no, like that. So how how do MRDC doing it now in advertising those new capabilities that we have? Okay. Uh, by the way, I forgot to answer the previous question. If the students can avail of our services or if they can do research here at Amsen, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, 
for researchers, automatically we get 20% discount on all our services. If you make us, if you would like to co-create with us and make us as your R&D partner, then there are special arrangements wherein we could provide counterpart support no? to mm. in your uh, financial exposure to your project. So there are various schemes uh, by which you could uh, avail of the Amazon Services. On the next question about, uh, I forgot. Uh, From the student? No, no, the, your question, sir. Uh, yeah, my, my question is, the, 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 how do, do you how do, how do you advertise now? No, because the, I, I saw so much capability. I, I, I work also many years in the industries. I know that many the engineers can realize that, well, we just do this prototyping with I'm saying, no? like that. Mm -hmm. So that, my question now is how do you how 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 you're going to advertise it now to public? No? Yes, uh, through the multimedia platform. Uh, we have our website, our Facebook page. We do some webinars. Uh, we had been invited to a lot of uh, speaking engagement and presentations, even in uh, US also, and uh, with ASTM. And uh, there are a lot of platforms that uh, we are involved in right now. Uh, but definitely, uh, there'll be more of the like uh, ikapihan, some sort of, and a lot of BOST activities that we were invited to uh, present. Yeah, okay. so thank you, sir. Okay, uh, I have here a question uh, posted by maybe. The question is for Sir Dondi from YouTube, participant. Sir, how can we speed up the adaptation of IoT in our sectors? In, our, in your opinion, what IoT area should we prioritize? Sir Dondi. So, uh, so IoT is only as uh, effective as you, as we are used to uh, leveraging data, right? So, um, and in leveraging data, of course, we 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 need, as you mentioned, as you asked earlier, a lot of data scientists, a lot of application developers. Um, right now, the the, in, the un in, unfortunate situation globally is that we have IT, like computer science, uh, computer science individuals, people who are programmers, and then you have the engineers on one side. And like the industry where the problem was when it converged, we didn't know what to do from a technology perspective, like integrating systems. I think the, the ability to really uh, leverage industrial IoT is again a human convergence now. It's the convergence of the, the traditional computer science graduates of computer science talents and the engineering talents. Because right now, when we when when I when I go to clients and when we're really, even even the most advanced um, um, institutions, right, and they want to make use of um, the data that they have, um, they have to get a computer science graduate or a data science person, and then they ha they get an engineer, and then they make them work together, and then they it takes it takes time for them to really create the the value because you you, you can't you can't create the insight unless you know the, the the physics or the the engineering behind it so i think the best the best the best way is that if we can from the start from the education from 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 the start of college or from the start of the education of individuals this convergence is also already innate with with the with the talent that uh, the, the education that people are getting. So when they when we graduate, when their students graduate, they already have this combination. Um, so I think uh, the best way we can really foster it is through an integrated education system, more integrated. It's already integrated, but a more integrated education system that will create the in, the data scientists who are also the, the engineers. And then I think that's the, the best way we can do it. Yeah, I, I agree with you though, because uh, we, we cannot easily pinpoint a industrial sector to, to prioritize, but if we start it from the bottom you know, among the graduates, engineers, and and the sciences, computer science, science students, graduates, I think uh, we can elevate more no, to, to that level. No? Actually in the, in the engineering uh, courses here in the Philippines, we have this industrial engineering, no? uh, although some countries might mislead this one as really specialists of um, machines like that, but it's more of like this. no. So the industrial engineering that we have is 
looking at this one, vertical integration, horizontal integration, because I put some subjects a bit. Then, yeah, what, what is lacking is the data, no? the, how to gather the data, of course, how to make use of the data. And in the case of that, that program that I was working with the Japanese, the AI, artificial intelligence with Monozukori, I don't know if you heard that one, it's more of the art of uh, doing products, the art of craftsmanship. So it was really uh, for me, that way I supported that one because it's really be helping our students also no, to level up. So unfortunately, because of the pandemic, the Japanese can no longer come here. So that's why it's all at stop. No? So when you present this one, Mr. Campo, I find it really interesting. No? I know that uh, I saw in one of my presentation the uh, industries in Germany now is really in that integration process, no? the horizontal and the vertical. That's why there's no such, they, they cannot incur so much delays no? because they have parallel uh, similar if you, uh, processing unit. Then if there's a bug down here, it can move easily to the other one like that. No? So well-organized no? in the point of view of industrial engineering, it's a well-organized way of uh, doing manufacturing. So that's why I, I know this type of idea would flourish here in the Philippines. Yeah, but maybe we should start at the academy. No? Uh, but I think what we lack, no, in my personal opinion, is that of course, how to merge the two, no? because we have the, 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 the college of computer science is actually, of course, except computer engineering no? under the school of engineering. So that, like that, no? so maybe this is a new type of uh, courses, maybe data science or yeah, data scientists for that matter. Okay, so thank you for that uh, sharing. Now, I think uh, we, we don't have any questions now. So let me call on ERDT Secretariat, Ms. Jane. Can you hear me? So what's the next step? Of course, I have to synthesize but do we have to give them certificates? I'm asking now the secretariat. Uh, any of you? Joy, Ali. Okay, so we can proceed with. <laughs> we can proceed with the synthesis. Okay, so. Uh, in summary, you know, for all the presentation, uh, of course, some of it I will be posing as a question. So the first speaker, the guest speaker, uh, really opened our mind. No? Uh, Mr. Leonides de Ocampo is really trying to portray to us that the more advanced way of manufacturing is the use of data. Of course, the highway, which is the internet. So that's why we have the internet of things. And it would lead us to this vertical integration and horizontal integration. When vertical, we mean that all the data from the, from the field can easily be extracted by the top management, no? And vice versa, uh, I don't know with vice versa, but I think it's upward, moving upward and data. Then, of course, what we are after here is more of uh, time, no? to, to save time, to cut costs, because integration, uh, supply chains, uh, supply chain across the industries would really reduce also costs, theoretically, no? in, in concept. So uh, he also discussed about the artificial intelligence which would process the data. No? Uh, after manufacturing, more data are gathered, and eventually that would be processed. And that would the AI, uh, the, 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 it would give back feedback no, to the managers that this is the, because we, so much data we, we cannot no longer interpret, but the, the computer can easily do that one. No? So I think that was a very good presentation. No? For us students in research in master's degree and PhD, uh, this would open another venue. No? It's are very good already for, for research also. Now, in the second presenter, or guest speaker, engineer Fred Pilisa of MIRDC, the 
the additive manufacturing. Now, we heard so much about nanotechnology. I think this is already nano. It's corrected, but I believe because the layer per layer uh, printing is really adding, of course, the particle is added there is in the nano scale already. So what was very impressive with this presentation is that MARDC, the traditional metals research development corporation found in Tangig, is already capable of doing it, no? So they have this so many array of printers and the rapid prototyping, which is the, a very long process before, as they are saying also in the creation of vaccine, it took 10 years, the traditional killing of dead vaccines and inject that one as a vaccine shot. But the, 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 the latest one now, it would only take few months, no? So in the like manner in manufacturing, we want also that one, the rapid prototyping, meaning we can do it in days and weeks, then that will be fine. No? It would speed up all our manufacturing target. So uh, it is open also to the academy. So I'm happy with that. No, I have good news for my students already. Then uh, I hope, what we just hope is that the government would, con would continue and sustain this type of effort because it really level up no? our, our industries and our academy also, and for that matter, the entire country. Our third presenter is Dr. Arnold Guban. Now the advancement in polymer, but this is not the simo, simple case of polymer, but sustainable polymer. When we say sustainable, meaning the recyclability of things. No? So at present, we have so much problem with plastics and waste, no? maybe floating in the sea, killing the whales. But I think if this center for sustainable, for sustainable polymers can do some means of converting that one, those waste easily, then I think people would start to gather and make money out of the plastic waste no? because as of now, they are just being neglected. No? So, they're floating in the sea, but I think the, um, the bigger problem now with, with in, the, in the ocean are the plastic nets no? by, left behind by the fishermen. And these are big nets, no? that's why they're killing so big fishes also and the whales. So in summary, we have a very good uh, discussion this afternoon about production and manufacturing sector. It's really the 21st or 22nd century level of technology that we are looking at. No? So to the, my dear students, to the ERDT scholars, I hope you take note of this and you may ask some materials from the secretariat, especially the, if you want to access the a PDF copy of the presentation materials, which you might need, then uh, communicate to them. No? If you're really interested on the area that we are discussing with, I suggest you ask your advisor, and then communicate with them so that uh, you can make use of whatever uh, they can also support you or they can help you. So many are asking here, uh, we can request for a copy of presentation. So I would refer that one now to the secretariat. You know? So uh, the, the one who organizing this one. So I think, yeah, that's all I can make my synthesis. So to the secretariat, I think it's now the closing message of our uh, organizer. Thank you very much, Engineer Del Campo, Dr. Lubguban, Engineer Lisa, and Dr. Abeliana. Being a mechanical engineer myself, and having recently been involved in a multi-sectoral commercial product using additives manufacturing and new materials. This webinar has led me to a better appreciation of integrating the different technologies that allow for better efficiency and lower cost. The new insights on additive manufacturing and new materials also makes me think of different ways for me to achieve my mechanical designs. I am sure that everyone else in this audience would now be entertaining similar thoughts on how their manufacturing and production can be improved. And this eye-opener is made possible through our three presenters and moderator. Again, thank you very much. 
as we bring this webinar and the ninth ERDT Congress to a close, we would also like to thank the Department of Science and Technology and the Science Education Institute who has provided scholarships, research grants, and learning and collaborative opportunities like this through the Engineering Research and Development for Technology program. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe.